Hello and welcome to a quick look at my 150g ant weight reloader. First off we go back a few years to look at Loader, which is a tracked pushing robot and has been a staple of my team for many years now. Reloader is a reimagining of the concept but with a lifting weapon. The prototype here is formed around some fairly simple components. You have to start with the Malenki Nano ESC um, receiver combination, uh, a 7.4 volt servo from the BBB web store, and strangely three drive motors, which are custom N10s driving silicon tracks, and some 150 milliamp hour LiPo cells to power it. The weapon is a four bar lifter, similar to uh, Biohazard and Storm 2 and it has an interesting motion in that it throws up and forwards instead of just up or just forwards. Now, despite the two being very, very similar in shape, uh, you'll notice Reloader is actually narrower by quite a way, about 12 millimeters, um, but it is two millimeters taller in the chassis. The chassis is still a single piece, which is printed in ABS over the hips of the original loader. Uh, it will be printed in yellow ABS to continue the branding. So now is the time to strip down the existing frame and transplant all of the components to the new one. It's relatively straightforward to take Reloader apart as it involves unbolting all of the armor, uh, which is just M3 and M2 screws, and popping all of the components out of their um, housing. Luckily, with how Reloader is designed, you can pretty much pour all of the existing components into a new chassis and it will work. The rear pivot point of the lifter is just an L-shaped pin which pops out of place with just a little encouragement. And just pushes back in into the new frame. Now, not all holes are created equal or even broadly circular. Especially when dealing with printed parts, I tend to use an RC car body reamer to open out and taper the holes for easier threading of screws or to better fit things like bearings. Speaking of bearings, there are two in the rear of this chassis which just support the drive motor shafts. This idler pulley at the front of the robot has two 3mm ball bearings in it. The drive pulleys are a close fit on the motor shafts and then are retained with a small dob. The drive motors pop into slots in the chassis and are well supported along their whole length. I'll probably add a dob of glue to them once I'm sure I won't have to remove them again. The servo is a 7.4 metal gear servo brought from the Bristol Bot Builders web store. Once again, it's securely supported by sitting in a shaped pocket in the chassis and retained with the old favourite, superglue. The 
lifter arm can now be bolted together using an M2 cap head. Notice how the arm has a strange relief here. It's actually so that it can clear the servo neck and sit flat. Not as strong as the solid beam, but that's why we have titanium plating. While generally considered pretty poor form, I have always gotten away with tapping printed parts to moderate success, so I'm continuing that here. The power for this robot comes in the form of 150 milliamp hour lithium polymer cells. Here they're made into a two cell pack feeding a Melanchi Nano combination ESC and receiver. As I wish to run three cells, I need a higher voltage controller, once again going to the BBB web store. It is larger, heavier, but will handle higher voltage. Another downside is it needs to be connected to a separate receiver. Luckily, it's still quite compact as I'll be doing away with the supplied pins and soldering directly. With a spot of horrific electronic crimes, I'll have a small but capable unit. So the unit is complete, and while it's not the prettiest, it's at least functional, which is more than I can say for me. It also slots where it should, also more than I can say for me. I just need to connect the motors to the AC and the servo to the receiver. The third cell has been added to the pack, taking it from 7.4 volts to 11.1 volts nominal. The red JST plug is just for charging as the battery is hardwired in. The wires run past the on off switch and go straight to the ESC. Once you see the switch flipped you can see a light comes on and no fire which is a nice bonus. Fire averted it's now time to bind the receiver to my transmitter and select the right model for reloader. And then once the lid is bolted down, it's time for a quick test. As you can see, it moves around like it should. Uh, it doesn't look particularly controllable here, but none of the mixing is set up, the trims won't be set up, and it's just kind of running on fumes as it were. pretty happy with the increased performance on three cells. It can turn a lot better with a full track width and it seems to be able to push relatively well, which is good for a pushy robot. And just giving it a quick weigh shows it falls well under the 150 gram weight limit. Aside from some filing and some decals, it's pretty much good to go and will be sent into combat at the end of the month. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. But other than that, thank you for watching. <laughs>